exciting day today. We're heading out to Bike Biz in uh, Granville in Sydney and we just got the call that our brand new 2020 ZH2 is ready to be picked up. I haven't actually even seen one of these in person yet. Uh, just what I've seen on the internet and YouTube and I tell you, I knew it was the bike for me. I uh, already do a lot of products for the H2 but I tell you that riding position I was over that a long time ago so my background is Street Fighters and I'm not talking the Ducatis I'm talking the 90s Street Fighters and I spent a lot of time a lot of years building them and uh, the aim of those bikes was always to give them a lot of power on a naked bike, strip the fairings off, give it an aggressive look, and that's just what this uh, this new ZH2 is. Factory supercharged, the first of its kind in a naked bike. So I'm extremely excited, looking forward to going and seeing the bike, picking it up. I've got the van all empty ready to go we're going to throw it in the back the weather's not the greatest but we'll uh we'll go and pick it up and we'll get out and have a ride very soon give you my first impressions we're going to stick it on the dyno see what it makes we've got a whole heap of products already that we make for the h2 which are transferable to the to the zh2 the supercharger gears and engine covers, clutch covers and different things. We're planning on making swing arm extensions, being that this is a twin sided swing arm on this bike, perfect for bolt in swing arm extensions to really take advantage of that extra horsepower that we're gonna give it. So if you're interested in what we're doing, like, subscribe, click the bell, and we'll keep you up to date with all the latest developments as we go along with the 2020 ZH2. Just soaking it all in. This is Tony's beast. Yeah, we just spent work mostly. So I would say 90% of it. This is the one we used to develop most of the, the uh, inner cooler kit and a number of products. Yeah, yeah so I'm still got everything's on it. You can see the lock wire on it. Yeah. Uh, so pretty much the look's still the same. Goose driver's still on it. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Still, still geared for 400 k's an hour. Still uh, 410. <laughs> uh, gear it. We actually better staying that way because um, it actually makes the bike easier to ride. Because it's got so much go. Yeah, it got so much power, and especially when the boost kicking in. It still shit myself a lot when the boost kicking in though. Yeah. So this is the bike went 204 Two miles an hour. Miles. Yeah, we have the at Lake Gardner on the salt. Actually, the plaque, <laughs> He's got his plaque on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't normally take that out often, but um, just because this is a special occasion. Yeah. Now I have to please. 
So give us a rundown of the bike, Tony. Okay, so basically this is the 200 horsepower supercharged and naked version of that. Yeah. Um, the main difference is being a naked is now we have pillion available instead of only have a single rider. Uh, it's double sized wing arms, more rigid as well. Um, still having the sort of elements from the H2, which as you can see, um, turbo frame, the green one, um, and the new, the new tackle now it's completely thank you with a brand new tackle, which is not exactly the same as what you got from the H2XX, but this is the brand new design, so it shows pretty much everything with the new technologies on this bike now come with the IMU system which is um, providing um, to record everything like lean angles and braking braking strengths and also the whole geometry is recording um, and also um, we've been a, a street bike as well this one comes with a lot more technologies to make your rider comfortable for example it's a, it has, comes with cruise control uh, now has multiple rider mode, actually four different riders actually comes with uh, a Bluetooth connectivity as well to your phone. Yeah. So you'll be able to download an app called Rideologies. Uh, Ride, Rideologies. Actually okay. you can um, download it through your iPhone and connect to the bike. Yeah. Um, KQS up and down, so both way. Okay, you so it only blip, one way on mine. Does it, it blips the throttle, does it? It blips the throttle so when you down shift. Okay. So it should goes both ways. Oh, I'll have lots of fun with that. Yes, I've been through a lot on that as well. So I, I believe most of the stuff can just go duplicate it and apply to this one. Yeah, well, I've, I've been way. looking at the motor and a lot of the, the parts, like I do the clutch cover and, yep. and that, that'll bolt straight on by the looks of it. Yeah. The intercooler will be able to, with some modification, we'll be able to fit the intercooler. Yeah, I think the top is different again. It is, it is slightly different. It looks very similar to the SX. So yeah. I, I believe it's different again because the tank is, is slightly bit different. Okay. What well, you're going to use it and how you want to play with it. I'm going to make everything for it. So. <laughs> I'm so, going to go and see Michael at Van Diemen and see if he can do an exhaust for me. Uh, yeah, he would love to. He will love to. Probably will go for ECU first to see the mapping, see yeah. if any restrictions or yeah, mapping. Well, as soon as someone comes out with a... The, the software to flash it that yep. will be onto that as well yeah we, i think all right exciting time all right there right, we go so that's q switch yeah. Thanks mate. So massive thanks to Ronnie and Tony at Bike Biz for hooking me up with the bike. We're gonna go and, uh, and they got me a nice little banner to put on the wall in the dyno room. Now there it is in the van. Let's go and get it unloaded and go for a ride. All right, first ride, see how it goes.
Sunday ride, here we go. I've done a couple hundred k's on it so far, still trying to run it in, so... Unfortunately work keeps getting in the way while we're cruising. I figure I'll just give you a, my impressions of the bike so far. It's uh, suspension is firm. I've I need to adjust it a bit better. I think it's uh, the rear shock seems to really jar you. It's got plenty of go. It is is lacking a little bit of torque in the mid range. Just. I'm used to turbo bikes, so I'm used to that mid-range torque and this thing really, it's better than the H2, but it, it could do with a bit more mid-range. So we've done about 600 k's on the bike now and it's still completely stock other than some aftermarket mirrors and a tail tidy. Uh, engine wise it's completely standard. We've got the OEM muffler on it. So we're going to do a run on the dyno to try and get a baseline uh, just see where the power is at uh, because every dyno reads different and I know that on a Dynajet they make about 184, 185 horsepower. I suspect on my dyno it will read a lot less than that. Uh, just different brands of dynos read differently. So I'll get that baseline with the OM muffler and then I've got an aftermarket uh, SP engineering muffler which we've made a little link pipe for and stick that on there. It's, got, uh, it's still going to run the factory headers and the cat uh, just with the aftermarket muffler and I'll see if there's any gains to be had with the uh, the other thing I want to try is uh, taking the air filter out of the ram tube it's it's located on the ram tube on this thing and uh, take that out and see if there's any gains to be had by having no air filter that'll tell us if there's a if it's if an aftermarket upgraded air filter will give us any power gain so let's get started we'll do a couple of baseline runs and uh, see where it's at where we've ended up with the factory muffler we've got um 161 was our best which was the second run uh you can hear by the sound of it it was struggling with to try and get the air out the exhaust out so uh if we look at the boost 
So at 12,000 revs, we're making 16 pounds of boost, 16 PSI. You can see where it just flattens off here at 10,500 revs, that it really struggles to, to make any more power. That's because they're, they're closing the throttle. Uh, that's all within the ECU, and that's why we need to get in there and de-restrict it. So, 161 with the OEM setup. Now we're going to change over to the SP Engineering muffler. mufflers on all our turbo kits and have pretty good luck with them. So they're made in the UK by SP Engineering and you should definitely check them out if you like the look of that muffler. They're a great muffler, excellent quality, all made in the UK. One other thing I should mention is uh, the OEM, we weighed the OEM muffler and it is 7.6 kilos and this one weighs one kilo so a six and a half kilo uh, decrease in weight is not a bad thing all right let's do a run Okay, so this is what we've got. We've bended up with a, a decent increase right through the rev range. It's uh, about three, three to five horsepower increase right throughout, uh, and then up to six horsepower at the top there. All right, so we'll take that air filter out and see if that picks up any horsepower. <laughs> about another three horsepower or two horsepower and mainly right at the top end so what we're doing there is freeing up the flow in the motor uh, and even though the throttle is closing there is you know still a lot of airflow trying to get in try, we're trying to get airflow through the motor it's still revving out and by removing that air filter it's made less restriction 
uh, and allowed a bit more power. You can see that the thing's going to make a lot more power once the ECU is de-restricted. So that's going to be it for this video and it's given us our good baseline. We, we started with 161 uh, with the OEM muffler and then we've gone up to 168 horsepower with the slip-on SP engineering muffler and then by removing the air filter I've gone up to 171 horsepower now that tells me that the there is power to be had in a more free-flowing air filter uh, next video we are going to start looking into the engine we've got some engine upgrades and we should see that power go up substantially um, we have just about got the intercooler system finished and we've got some supercharger gears to put in the motor to increase the boost the problem at the moment is there isn't any flashing software so we can't tune the the fueling or the ignition or we can't tune anything in the ECU um, as you can see by de-restricting it we'll, you know we'll pick up it'll be up around 200 horsepower on this dyno uh, just by having a de-restrict so uh, I'm going to just try and do as much as I can until all the other parts become available. Alright, cheers guys. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Click the bell and stay tuned for more updates.